So as I mentioned, the mission of the command, the C2 matrix is to find the best modern replacement for Empire, one that's reliable, consistent, user-friendly, and meets our requirements. And our requirements started growing. We wanted to something that's operationally secure. We don't want to get caught or hacked uh, on our infrastructure, on our attack infrastructure. We want to have multiple command and control channels, really based on the adversary you are emulating, what channels do they use. Most of the time you'll see HTTP being one of the main channels. Um, so, but you want to list, what does each one of these have? Then you also want different agents and payloads. Are you going after Macs? Are you going after Linux systems? Are you going after Windows systems? Are you going after Android? What are you going after? You need to be able to create agents that interact with that command and control server you're setting up. We also want custom profiles because blue teams will fingerprint these command and control servers. They want, <clears throat> and we want to remain stealthy, so we want to be able to customize what we do. We also want some domain fronting capabilities. This is used very common. It's uh, one of the main tactics or techniques under the command control tactic in MITRE. So the ability to do that. The ability of being proxy aware. Many corporate organizations use proxies. And you want to be able to pivot. So if I fish one person inside an organization, I want to use that system to be able to move laterally without having other systems also calling out to my command and control. We do it all through this particular beachhead. We want multi-user capability because that's the team part of Red Team and community involvement to see and to see if these uh, C2s are actually used by others and tested and really understand. I started looking around and there are 35 frameworks today. When I released this project in November at San Hackfest, I believe we only had 28 or so. So these continually come out. Um, I want to thank all contributing developers for all of these. You are the real MVPs. Thank you for all your hard work. And here's the list of frameworks that we have. Just look at all those C2s. Quite a bit. And at first, I only thought there was a few. You'd hear about Covenant, or you'd hear about Cobalt Strike, obviously, is one of the main ones used by Red Teams, and a lot of other ones popping up and with various different frameworks. So I had to set some parameters or phases, if you will, or time was going to run out. I only had about uh, three months to do this, and uh, my talk had already been accepted. I couldn't just go and uh, make stuff up. So I decided that I could only evaluate and document all the C2s and focus on the communication channel. Then phase two would be creating how-tos for the most popular C2s so other people can try them. And then document post-exploitation features, like lateral movement tactic. And maybe even do attack mapping so that we can pick an adversary, see their TTPs, and then show us how what adversary or what C2 is likely has, has the most coverage for those TTPs. And then phase three is really open just for anyone to contribute. I spoke at uh, Art Into Defense, a conference on defense, so um, definitely felt like an imposter there. Uh, giving this presentation, the feedback was great, and they want more detection type solutions built in. So this is, like I said, an open source project. If anyone's interested, uh, definitely let me know. From the red team perspective, though, let's talk about channels. This was one of the most important ones. I mentioned earlier, most command and control and what adversaries are using is using HTTP. So that's generally one of the more important uh, channels that we're going to look at. HTTP has the ability to be proxy aware, to do domain fronting, and to have a custom profile. We have our traditional TCP uh, listeners so that you, the client establishes an outbound TCP connection. We have HTTP2, which you might or might not allow in your network or in your target organization network. HTTP3. DNS, this is generally a channel that we're always testing. This is not very quick. It's better for those long haul type of communications. 
Then you have DOH, that's DNS over HTTPS. I'm sure many of you have seen some of the browsers are turning this on by default. So you might have this traffic in your organization and not even know it. ICMP, FTP, and IMAP, some of the more traditional clear text channels. Now, most of these command and control frameworks do what's called beaconing. That means that the agent, the computer you compromise, will call out to your server <coughs> every so often. You should be able to configure that time. For a short haul, you can do it every minute, every 10 minutes, you call out. Or you can have a consistent connection. But generally a consistent connection, say over HTTP, looks really shady. Most blue teams will catch that because HTTP is not a protocol that's supposed to be a consistent connection. It then gets and you get a request back. Um, so things like Meterpreter, which I'm sure everyone's familiar with, is that consistent type of connection. Other things that we like to see are called jitter. So you set up your beacon to call back, say, every 10 seconds, and then you set a jitter. Why? If a server or system, an endpoint, is making a connection out every 10 seconds, that's a pretty easy pattern to identify. So you can change that, and you can add a jitter. A jitter is a percentage. So for instance, if you put a 50% jitter on a 10 second beacon, it can beacon out anywhere from five to 15 seconds. And that's if I did math correctly. If I didn't, I apologize. But that's how be a jitters work. So that's kind of important. We also had a feature called working hours. It's a nice feature on Empire that most people, especially endpoints, they don't work 24 hours a day. I mean, maybe 12 hours is normal, but definitely not 24. So you can set the working hours to say 9 p.m. 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. and only have command and control communication during those times. So it's quite interesting um, feature. You also have the kill date. The kill date is important for us from the cleanup perspective. What happens if we deploy 10 of these agents all over the network? They're calling out. And then the blue team catches our command and control server and blocks that communication. The agent will continue to run on all those compromised endpoints. It will continue to call out. And when will it stop? If it's memory only, maybe when the system reboots. If you added persistence, then it will probably stay there a lot longer. So you can set a kill date, and that is when your agent will stop communicating out to the C2 server and generally cleans up after itself. It's something that I cared about decided to test. The C2 profile is an example from Empire. You can set various different things, such as the user agent. Every browser has a user agent. If uh, the blue team is looking at user agents outbound and they have Chrome and Firefox, and all of a sudden you send a user agent that doesn't match that, you could get caught. So you, could, you should be able to modify those. You should modify the default profile of what, what site continually gets pulled. In this case, you see a slash admin, slash get.php, slash news.php, slash login, slash process.php. That is what anyone that is seeing this over clear text or if they're decrypting HTTPS will be seeing the requests going out. And then you have a staging key. The staging keys are important for operational security that even if you use a clear text channel like FTP or ICMP or DNS, you have a cryptographically secure connection between your agent and your server. So all of these should be modifiable in the C2 frameworks that you're looking into. Then we looked at user agents. A lot of uh, user interfaces. A lot of them were command line interfaces only. Some had some sort of graphical user interface. Some allowed a web uh, interface, and generally multi-user, where you, different people can log in and interact together like a team and some have APIs. So we added all those as factors to look into as well. And then agents, what, where can you create agents for? Can you create Windows payloads? Can you create Android, Linux, or Mac? And then on the operational security side, as I mentioned earlier, you want a cryptographically secure communication between your agents and your C2 servers. So look into those. Most use encrypted key exchange that is a key that is known by both uh, systems. Another one, for example, Merlin use uh, APAC opaque, 
which allows a dynamic key to be created as, um, as the connection is established. You have AES, MTLS, et cetera. We also wanted warnings for bad OPSEC. For instance, if you are going to run a shell, and you can see the screenshot here on the bottom right, on Sliver, if you run shell, it says, this action is bad OPSEC. Are you an adult? Which I obviously answered no to, and I didn't get a shell. It's a good warning system so that you don't get caught. And then you need to know your IOCs. This is very important for Red Team. Before you run or do anything in the target environment, you need to know what indicators of compromise you're going to be leaving behind and how the blue team can catch you. So for this, I, I ran Sysmon on the Windows systems, Wireshark and TC or TCP dump on the Linux systems and Windows systems to see what, how, what the traffic looked like, make sure it was actually encrypted and make sure that everything advertised actually worked. As for my testing infrastructure, I created a PFSense um, firewall with multiple zones. One zone was the attacker zone. I tried to do everything on Kali. Um, for certain ones, they just did not want to work on Kali. Uh, as a little sneak peek to all of you that are on here and listening, working with the offensive security folks, so the next version of Kali will have a number of the C2 matrix C2s that work there. Um, without too much trouble, which is quite nice. You'll be, people will be able to access some of these C2s a lot easier. And then some systems, some servers are Windows only. And then our victims on the other side are Mac, Windows, and Ubuntu is what I use for testing. So without further ado, we'll jump over to a demo here. Um, if you want to play along, look at the screen or go to the c2matrix.com. So I'll show you the ugly version first. And this is the golden source. The Google Sheet has the latest and most up-to-date info because it is the easiest to update. So over here on the left side, you have all your different command and control frameworks. You can see that's 32 of them. Yes, there are a couple that are not filled out. That really bothers me. If anyone has experience with any of these, let me know and let's evaluate them. You can see the evaluate, who evaluated these. Big shout out to all the contributors when they were evaluated, on what day. The license, so most of these are open source. They have various different licenses and some are commercial. You have the price for the commercial ones. You have the version that's reviewed. The implementation, how did we install it? Sometimes we use Docker, sometimes PIP. Sometimes it was binary, sometimes it was installed at SH. That's what we used and that's how it was successful for us. Then um, there's the, does it work on Kali or not? If you are a Kali fan, there you can, you know which ones will work uh, smoothly. Then the server side code. You'll see a lot of Python on the server side code, some PowerShell, some Go, some PHP. That's the server side, that's your C2 server. And then your agents. Most agents uh, are created dynamically to connect to your server, and they require one of these languages. You'll see Python there, you'll see Go, you'll see Swift, you'll see uh, Java, C Sharp, et cetera. Then you have the UI. Which ones are multi-user, which are not or have some sort of other UI, and do they have an API? Then we get to our channels. As I mentioned, all the different channels you can see here, most of them have HTTP, HTTP, but I saw someone ask, which framework is best for DNS? That's a great question. You can actually go here and just take a look. Cobalt Strike does DNS, Godo does DNS, Innuendo, uh, Scythe, Sliver, and Weasel. Or which one does? Go, DNS over uh, HTTPS. You can see Godo does that. And then you keep scrolling over here on the right. I'm sure everyone knows how to use an, a spreadsheet. You have the various different agents, which won't work on Windows, Linux, or Mac, depending on your attack. The key exchange. Some of these don't have key exchanges. That's obviously not good. Some of them do. This is Merlin, the one I was talking about that has a pretty interesting key exchange. Some have stego steganography. Some are proxy aware, some can do domain fronting, some can do custom profiles, 
Some allow jitter and some don't. Some have working hours, really only Empire. It's really a feature I haven't seen anyone else implement. You have your kill dates, your chaining. Can I use that one agent that I deployed to then chain and move laterally with it? Does everything log? Very important logging for doing red team engagements. Which one's actively maintained? You'll see some of here have been, are not maintained. I will point out right now that everyone says you started this project because Empire was end of life, but it shows that's maintained, and that is correct. <clears throat> Empire is now maintained by BC Security. They actually released version 3.06 recently, and they even sent out a teaser of creating a web UI for it. So it is actively maintained. Some of these have Slack and a pretty good community. Um, some are on Twitter. You have different sites. They're GitHubs, they're GitHub issues, if support matters to you, how-tos, and then some notes. So this was the original project, but then I said I have to make this a little prettier. So I worked with my collaborators at Scythe, uh, particularly Sean from their team created this website. This website is the c2matrix.com, and it has two things. It has Ask the Matrix, where you can fill out different questions and it factors out what you need. So do you need a C2 that supports multiple users? Yes, I need multiple users. Next, it automatically filtered out what you need. You need HTTPS and maybe let's say DNS. You'll see it filters out quite quickly and it will allow you to choose your C2 much faster. It also has a nicer uh, graphical view of the matrix you can see this is a lot easier on the eyes than a spreadsheet. You can look at the code and the UI, the various different channels, the agents, the capabilities, and the support. Everything we just went in, uh, through right now. So I'll jump back into the presentation. Um, <clears throat> once you have your C2 set up, you can go through and do emulate the attacker. <clears throat> 